By now, you've likely heard of something called the DASH diet. DASH, D-A-S-H, stands for Dietary Approach to Stop Hypertension, I think is what the A is. Dietary Approach or Approaches to Stop Hypertension. And they identified you know, a, a diet that was capable of slightly reducing blood pressure. And, and that was relevant because if you reduce blood pressure, you can reduce the risk of heart attack and heart disease in general. The diet, the DASH diet is famous. Then all you'll ever hear about is that it is low fat and low salt. That's what people want to brag about and, and use it as evidence. The problem is it is multifaceted. There are multiple aspects and dietary changes that go into the DASH diet, including reduced consumption of refined sugars and starches. So it's basically something like, in fact, it sounds like a somewhat miserable diet, which is probably why so few people adhere to it. It's very low in salt. It's very low in refined starches and sugars, and it's very low fat. Well, I can get behind one of those things. I very much am an advocate of reducing dietary starches and sugars or refined starches and sugars, but that was all a part of it. There's many factors, but the only thing you ever hear about is the low salt and the low fat. Well, what if it's the low carb that's actually benefiting the people here, as modest as the benefit is? Now, to, with this study in mind, the DASH diet, so Chu et al., C-H-I-U, in 2016 published a paper that actually looked at, it compared the typical DASH diet, which is low fat, low refined carb, low salt, with a really high fat version. So very high saturated fat that people were encouraged to eat full fat dairy liberally. So they were eating substantially multiple times more saturated fat than the other group. And not only did they enjoy the same reduction in blood pressure that the standard DASH diet did, and remember, that's the main reason people do it at all. So not only did they enjoy the exact same reduction in blood pressure, but they actually had better lipid improvements. Their triglycerides went down more and their VLDL went down more while the LDL stayed the same across the two groups. That is really impactful. By lowering triglycerides and lowering VLDL, those variables are much more predictive of heart attack risk than LDL is. In fact, a paper was just published in the past few weeks at the time of me recording this in May 2024 that looked at varying blood lipid categories in people with higher or lower risk of having a heart attack. And the people with the lower VLDL, but the higher LDL had the lowest risk of having a heart attack. I'll say that again, people with the higher LDL, but the lower VLDL had the lowest risk of a heart attack. That's exactly the lipid profile we're seeing changed in the high fat version of the famous and much beloved, I would say irrationally so, DASH diet. Um, so in general, by highlighting a meta-analysis that was published in 2020 by Choi et al., Choi et al., C-H-O-I, Choi et al., 2020, published in the journal Nutrients. They did a, a meta-analysis of 20 randomized studies looking at people who were overweight with or without type 2 diabetes and the use of ketogenic diets on a variety of metabolic in, uh, outcomes. So again, this is a meta-analysis, which, meta which is attempting to come up with a, a singular conclusion based on the combined outcomes of every published, in this case, clinical study. So very, very, very relevant. Now, just to reiterate, this is, of course, a ketogenic diet. And ketogenic diets, by their nature, are higher fat, including often much higher in saturated fat. And indeed, looking through, sorry, I said 20 randomized studies. It was 14 randomized trials. Looking at comparing it to low-fat diets or high-fat ketogenic diets. And they found that for these patients that are diabetic, so that means they're very insulin resistant, these are type 2 diabetic, the ketogenic diet resulted in significant improvements in both glycemic control and insulin resistance compared to those on the low-fat diet. So they found that the ketogenic diet, despite eating multiple times higher levels of saturated fat than the low-fat diet, had better improvements in insulin resistance. And moreover, they had substantial improvements in their blood lipids, but you can look at the other details in that study. But it directly refutes the idea in a meta-analysis that, that a high-saturated fat diet is going to cause insulin resistance. It directly, they found the opposite.